Hello guys, I'm going to do a little bit of a different video today. This is going to be a tutorial on how I made the horror movie trailer, like um, Angry Grandpa is a horror movie, uh, E.T. is a horror movie, McJugger Nuggets is a horror movie, and how I put those together. Now, I got a lot of requests on how to do this, just people asking, what did you make this with, how did, how did you do this, how did you do this part of it, and I'm just going to do like a really quick tutorial for those people. Now, you might not be interested in editing or anything to do with editing for that matter, but if you have any interest at all in it or you just want to see how I did that, uh, watch this video and it will show you how to do it. And if you don't have any interest in editing or video making of any kind, then you should probably just still watch this video because you should. So here we go. So right here, I'm just going to be using uh, McJugger Nuggets footage here for the video and I'm going to show you like how I made it, some uh, some of the effects I did in it, some of the color correction, all that kind of stuff. So if you might just be searching how to make a horror movie in Sony Vegas Pro or whatever like that and this came up and you don't care about anything that I just said at the beginning. So if you did, then I'm sorry. Anyway, so let's get to the point. So on the horror movie that I made, I'll put all those in the description so you can check out all of them that I made. So here we go, I just dropped in all the clips that I used for the trailer for Mick Jugger Nuggets as a horror movie, or at least the first few. I'm not going to do the whole thing, I'm just going to do like the basics of how I did it. So first, of course, what I did with any horror movie, you're going to put the um, restricted um, preview thing of like, who can watch the movie and stuff like that. So what I did here is I took the picture of this, I just found it on Google. I'll put a link to all the stuff that I'm using here, like the music, the sounds, I'll put all this in the description. The rating and stuff like that, I'll have like PG, PG-13, rated R. All those will be in the description and you can download those yourself. So I'm going to skip ahead about 0.2 seconds. So it just kind of goes like this. Just like that. Just kind of like a regular horror movie. Then what I did is I took the cinematic movie trailer suspense music. And I'm going to start it right where it starts to build up. Like right around here. And that's when the trailer is going to start. So I'm going to cut it right around there. And we're going to drag it over here. So right when the rating for the trailer ends, it's going to make that thud sound effect that's in the music. Kind of like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of skip over here to the end of the timeline and drop in one of his clips or the clip for your horror movie trailer or whatever kind of trailer you're doing. Now when you're using Sony Vegas, make sure that you right click on the video itself. So like right here, right click on it, click properties, and then you're going to want to reduce interlace flicker and disable resample. Now what this is going to do is stop it from ghosting. So when there's any movement, pretty much this is what it looks like if you don't disable the interlace flicker or disable resample, which a lot of people might have a problem with it will look like this and I am back at Uncle Larry's house after my one so you'll see that the video whenever there's motion like say somebody's hand is moving or their arm is moving the head is moving whatever is going on here it will look like there's a duplicate of that just a little bit before so here's the clip that I used for my Mick Jugger Nuggets as a horror movie this is how it starts out so I just trimmed it down with this to the part where I wanted to use and then ended it right here same same principle just end it right there clip it then I just clicked control C deleted it, moved forward, skimmed over here. You could also just move it, but this is how I did it because I wanted to. Paste it in there, control V, and you will see the preview with this. Uh, Jesse might be uh, hanging out or living there with you. Um, you know, I'm just uh, having no problem with that. And to give it more like that horror movie type feel to it, I'm going to click video effects. You're going to click curves, color curves, and you'll just see default. So drag the default one right under your video, and I'm just going to darken it just a little bit, lower the reds. You pretty much just have to mess around with it until you think that it looks kind of horror movie type movie cinematic look. Whatever you like, whatever you think looks good. This is what I think looks good to me. So like right, I'm going to say like right here. So this is after I color corrected it, so I'll show you what it looked like before. That's what it looked like before. That's what it looked like after I color corrected it. So it's pretty much just darker. Now what I did just to make this easier on myself, I named this horror movie look. And you can click the little save preset right here and it will save what you did. So now it will always be in your preset folder. When you exit out of it, you'll see horror movie look and you can just drag it on top of everything without duplicating it every single time. Now what I'm going to do is, all like any trailer that you're going to watch, you're going to have these widescreen bars. Now again, this will also be in the description below for you to download, and I'm going to put that just right over on top of the timeline. Now if you don't have a video track to add the widescreen bars, you're going to click insert video track. That will just show you multiple video tracks and you'll be able to add the widescreen bars at the top. Now once you have those, it's going to look a lot better. It's going to look more like you have a movie trailer look at the beginning of it instead of just a regular piece of footage from a camera. Uh, Jesse might be uh, hanging out or living there with you. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, having no problem with that. 
So that looks pretty good. Now, at the end of this where the clip ends, it kind of seems like it ends not dramatic enough. So you're going to want more of like a boom, like another one of those creepy movie trailer sound effects. So this download link will also be in the description. You can download this and uh, put this in your videos. So this is just a package of different booms and thuds for movie trailers. And you'll just want to find one that you like for whatever you're doing. Now I'm just going to fade it out too so it doesn't cut off. If you have the volume up kind of loud, you might hear a cut. Put a fade in at the beginning. You'll just want to grab this here. Now I'm going to click Control C and then click Delete on my keyboard. Now go back to the movie or trailer, whatever you're doing. I'm going to add it right at the end. So now you have something that looks like this. Yeah, I'm just having a problem with that. So it adds a lot to it. I don't, he wants to make my life a living hell. He thinks it's teaching me something, but it's not. It's doing the exact opposite. Now, the problem you see here is Uncle Larry's head is cut off by the widescreen bars since this wasn't recorded for widescreen bars. So the way to fix this, if you're countering this problem with if you're making a trailer here, you're going to want to click this little square. Now, this little square will bring up your event pan crop window, and you're going to want to make sure there's no keyframing so it won't move, and move it um, up or down, whatever way your thing wants to work. So his head is in place and it's not being cut off by the widescreen bars. Now just exit out of that and you'll see his head is not being chopped off by the bars at the top. I don't, he wants to make my life a living hell. He thinks it's teaching me something, but it's not. It's doing the exact opposite. So now you have something like this and it looks very good. I think it looks like more of like a movie tint. Now, I didn't even color correct this, but it looks pretty good, but I'm going to do it anyway just to show you what it looks like. See, that's not, that's not like, this isn't how you would want it. I don't think that, I think that's a little too much, too much red in it. So I'm going to bring the red down. I'm going to take the green. I'm going to br bring the green down as well. I'm also going to take the blue, but I'm going to bring the blue up. This is going to make it a little bit more cinematic before I color corrected anything. See that? So now you will have something like this. I don't, he wants to make my life a living hell. He thinks it's teaching me something, but it's not. It's doing the exact opposite. So now what I did here, this makes it a lot creepier, is right click on your audio track and click audio event effects. Now I'm just going to click reverb and we're going to click add. Okay. Now right here you're going to get your preset. Now I'm going to pick long haul and we're going to see how that sounds. Come any night. So we might need, need to be out here every night. So it gives it like an echoey feel like you're in a metal, metal room, more of like a horror movie type reverb effect, which is really cool. I find that pretty awesome, and uh, it makes it a lot creepier. I mean, I feel like if he's gonna come, it's gonna be really late. He could come any night, so we might need, need to be out here every night. I know you're out here. You coming out or you gonna hide? Now that's about it for just the trailer itself. It's pretty much just self-explanatory. Everything else that you have, like any other clips, you're just going to be doing the same thing. You're going to be adding, you're going to be finding different clips. You're going to be putting them together with the trailer sound effects that I have in the description and just see what looks good to you. See what looks the best. Use the color correction, the widescreen bars, and it's going to add a lot to your trailer. Now, like trailers usually do, you're going to want to build it up. So like at the beginning, it's not going to be extremely exciting. It's going to be a lot of, it's going to be calmer, but as it gets into like the middle of it to the end, it's going to build up and you're going to get the, the music is going to get louder. You're going to get all that kind of good stuff. You're going to get more dramatic sound effects. Like in the sound effects pack that I have in the description, you're going to get stuff like this. And you want to put that more towards the end or the middle so the suspense builds up, not like not right at the beginning. Now, the last thing that I did is I went to Adobe After Effects. Now, now this is how I did like the Psycho Dad effect zooming in. So I created a new comp, did 1920 by 1080. And this is just the comp that I created the text in where at the end it said Psycho Dad in red. So I placed in the text and I typed in Psycho Dad in all caps bring it in and it is completely black right now there we go now it's red oh that's not the right font okay i cannot find the font that i used so i'm just going to use impact whatever actually no just because it's kind of funny i'm going to use comic sans haha <laughs> i know you're mad at me so here we go comic sans psycho dad here and what I did is, this is also in the description, it's Footage Island, so go check out them, they have a lot of good stock footage. And this one's called Screen Glitch. So what you do is place it on top of the text that you want to use. This is pretty much just stock footage of it glitching over all over the place. So you see over here it says Track Mat, if you don't see that just click Toggle Switches, you'll see that down here. Click that and you'll see Track Mat, so you're going to want to take the 
screen glitch, click that and you'll see alpha matte psycho dad. So now what you're going to want to do is take the psycho dad layer, click precompose and click OK. Now you have this. Now I'm going to scale this down so it's kind of small. And what you're going to do next is click on your pre-comp and click S on your keyboard. Now you'll see this little stopwatch right here next to the word scale. You're going to click that and it will bring up a keyframe. Now about eh, three seconds into it, you're going to want to move your timeline thing. I don't know what it's called. A little uh, and scale your video up or use this whatever you prefer. That's what I did anyway. Now you'll see that the text gets bigger on its own, so it's animating the text. Now what I did is right at the very end of the keyframe, I did one keyframe directly after and immediately increased the size of the text to where it just says Cho. Then the next keyframe moved it back down. Next keyframe didn't move it at all. Next one moved it down just a little bit, just like this. And the next one I moved it down all the way to where it's tiny and then it will look like this. So it looks like it kind of like turns off, it gets really gigantic, and then just kind of goes down. And then the frame directly after it goes down to where it's this big, just take your comp, go to edit, split layer, and delete. Then take your work area end, and put it to the very end, then go to composition, trim comp to work area, and you'll have your text in place. Now, of course, it's gonna be white because that's what the stock footage was. And you can change this by going to your, inside your comp, click on the screen glitch and click tint. Now what you can do is tint the screen glitch, whatever color you want. So you can go to white, you can go to red, and you can go to black, so you can go to like light blue or whatever you want. And it will do those colors flashing instead of just white and black. So now you have your glitchy font text thing. And what I use to save videos from After Effects to Sony Vegas is just H264. So that's basically it. That's how I made the horror movie, all my horror movie trailers. It's pretty much the exact same thing, minus maybe a couple steps, but you'll probably get the point with the uh, trailer booms and the color correction and make sure you have the widescreen bars. The widescreen bars add a lot to your movie trailers. So I know this video wasn't a is it real video, but I did this because there's so many people asking how I made the movie trailers and how to make it and all that kind of good stuff. So if you enjoyed this video, click the like button, leave a comment below and, and subscribe. Oh, and there will be a is it real video coming out tomorrow, Saturday. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time.